Next, we have from, here from Victor Perkis, I mean, Hotkins, I'm sorry. I have an old professor named uh, Victor Perkis, but that's all right. So, uh, Victor is going to uh, tell us uh, about the business and economic profile of Arlington and uh, see what he can do in terms of 100 years and eight minutes. <laughs> Oh, I want to begin by saying I was very fortunate when I was young. I was an avid reader of science fiction. I absolutely love science fiction. I don't know how many of you here were, you know, like Isaac Asimov. Like a lot of people don't know that he's the one, he's the one that wrote I, Robot. And a lot of people thought that was like, you know, Will Smith. <laughs> so, not. So, and I also read Ray Bradbury. I loved Ray Bradbury, you know, The Martian Chronicles, I, I, Fahrenheit 451. I just loved that. I just loved that book, you know. And I think part of it was it could, it could take you to another place. It could take you to the future. And the thing that I noticed that, like, with B.F. Skinner and Walden, Walden too, different visions of the future, utopia, you know, some of it kind of post-apocalyptic. But, but the reality is that I think that what happened to me was when I saw Flash Gordon, when I saw the original Star Trek, yes, there was an original Star Trek before the next generation and all that other stuff, I, I think that it, it formed a vision of the future for me, which one was one of very, uh, very optimistic future. If you come in our office right now, you will see um, actually the Star Trek, Trek crew with, uh, with, um, with my favorites up there, including uh, Leonard Nimoy. But what I want to do tonight is really talk about kind of another vision of the future. And um, this is, a, this is a, you know, it's 100 years, so, you know, you can check me if I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> I, don't know, I, I, I call you to do that. Now, with these medical advances, you might be around. You never know. So I want to start with a, with a, um, a, a video um, and a vision Since that someone has of the future. Since the dawn of humanity, we have strived to enhance our living and working environments. Over the years, we have witnessed numerous quantum leap moments which have totally transformed our lives, from the invention of the car to the arrival of the internet. Today, we are making the next giant stride, the age of the smarter home, enabling us to monitor, control, and secure our living spaces with the touch of a smartphone. At any time and from anywhere, we can now switch on lights, turn up thermostats, unlock the back door, all from the palm of your hand using Samsung SmartThings technology. A century ago, advances in technology like these would have seemed impossible. So what can we expect to see in the next 100 years? As city space becomes more squeezed, we will burrow deeper and build higher. Towering megastructures will dwarf today's skyscrapers, while earth scrapers will tunnel 25 stories deep or more. Underwater cities are likely to become a reality using the water itself to create breathable atmospheres and generating hydrogen fuel in the process. Doc Brown in Back to the Future said, where we're going, we don't need roads. He may have got the year wrong, but his forecast about transport is likely to be correct. Some of us will be traveling the skyways with our own personal flying drones, some strong enough to carry entire homes around the world for holidays. Flexible smart walls will mean you won't ever need to decorate. LED room surfaces will adapt to suit your mood. When it comes to entertaining, there'll be no more botched recipes or pizza deliveries. We will download dishes from famous chefs and 3D print everything from gourmet meals to our favorite cakes in minutes. Our working lives will be transformed with holograms allowing us to attend meetings virtually without leaving home. This may lead to a shorter working week, but the strategic sickie will be the thing of the past. Step-in home Medipods will confirm if you are really ill, providing a digital diagnosis and supplying medicine or a remote surgeon if needed. And finally, the next giant leap will see Earth as so last century as we start colonising space. First the Moon, then Mars, and then beyond, out into the galaxy. Remember, these are just predictions for the century ahead. But with technical and medical breakthroughs moving apace and an ever-increasing life expectancy, you may not need to take my word for it. You might just be around to see it for yourselves. What I wanted to do is just give you kind of a, you know, a futurist view and then talk a little bit about, about Arlington. What, what's happening in Arlington right now, it's going through a transformation in terms of its economy. Um, our government services are shrinking. Um, our med tech um, is growing and evolving into biotech and personalized medicine. 
Um, our ed tech is going to take leaps and bounds. Um, and we're really evolving into um, a more cybersecurity, robotics, biomed, big data um, environment. And I think that by, tw by 2116, we will certainly be there. It, what's gonna change, and I, I'll just, because I only have about five minutes left, that was two and a half minutes and I burned about 30, uh, 30 other seconds. What I wanna do is talk about like how some of this is gonna happen. You know, in construction, like construction methods are gonna change totally. They will not involve people. They will actually involve swarms of drone machines. Now you're probably sitting there going like, really? But think about it. If you could program a drone to layer bricks, for example, one drone to come in to layer cement, another drone to come in to drop a brick, and another drone to come in and drop another brick. That's one methodology. They're also talking about 3D printing houses. They've already done it. That's printing houses at scale. They are, they're creating cars by 3D printing. I mean, it is really revolutionizing how a lot of work is going to be done. And the challenge is gonna be, what do we do? You know, how, do we, how do we really develop our purpose in life? And I think that one of the great things that, that Arlington is po poised for is really dealing with um, a purpose in life. I, Arlington, I think, is gonna be one of the few cities in a country that actually gets to zero homeless. That's because of the heart of the people of Arlington. It's, the numbers have gone from over 800 to down 172 now, and they are really fighting to get it to zero. That's purpose, and I think that kind of purpose is gonna become more important. Um, you know, there's a, there's a book called The Age of Unreason, um, written by a gentleman named Charles Handy. He's passed away now. Um, he was a um, um, professor emeritus at, at, um, at a CMC out in, in California, but also from the London School of Economics. In short, what he said was that we will live three lives, one life learning how to work, the second life actually working, and a third life giving back. I mean, essentially, that is the, kind of the purpose of our lives going into the future. How are we going to get around? Hey, isn't that nice? Okay, so this, this is something that is actually a prototype that they are saying will be flying in the next decade. Okay, this thing travels at over 1,000 miles an hour. They actually are looking at some that travel 3,500 miles an hour. At that speed, you can get across the country in about 45 minutes. The interesting thing is about, let me back up to this. The interesting thing about this, you won't need airports. By 2116, uh, our airport, won't really need it. You could actually stack planes because they'll be able to stop and hover. And that's something that we don't even think about these days. So much is gonna change that we won't even recognize it. Can you imagine getting in a, a Hyperloop and going to um, 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 New York in 30 minutes? I'd love to do that. If you've been on Amtrak, you know that'd be a gift. Um, Self-driving cars, this is not hyperbole. This is going to happen. This is a destiny. I, I, someone told me that 80 robotics engineers were recruited out of Carnegie Mellon to work for Uber. I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling secrets out of turn. The only reason I found this out is because this was an investment guy, um, and it's, it's public now, I said it. Um, they, they are working for Uber to create a self-driving car. There will not be Uber drivers. There will be Uber cars, but they will not be drivers, and they will get you to your destination with zero energy, and because a lot of these cars will be running off batteries or self-generating energy. Virtual reality, Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift is going to transform how we communicate. Like right now, when I talk to my mother, I get on the telephone. Um, if my mother was a little less afraid, um, she'd actually do FaceTime with me, okay? But I do FaceTime with my grandson, my, 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 my daughter, my son-in-law in Chicago all the time. Can you imagine putting on a pair of glasses, not those big clumsy ones that they have right now, but you know, 50 years from now, you'll just be able to put on a pair of glasses and you'll be able to see the reality that your, the person that you're talking to is sitting in. Um, you'll be able to, doctors will be able to walk into a body, into a brain, and be able to find tumors and look at tumors and locate tumors and diagnose treatments. It's going to be a very, very different world in very short order. Artificial intelligence. Now, this scares some people. Anybody here ever, did you, did you first of all, did you read iRobot? Okay, that, that's, our, that, okay that's scary because that's a fun book, but did you see iRobot? That was even scarier, okay? <laughs> 
But a lot of people fear this, but I don't think it's going to be quite the way that, that, that they've been um, portraying it in movies. And this is certainly not going to be the way in Arlington. I think a lot of people aren't going to do their own work. Um, but there will be a lot of things that we won't want to do, like cut the lawn, or I mean, like me, I don't like cleaning gutters. I like a robot for that. Um, but also, they'll be able to, you know, retrieve drinks, bring your medication, tell you when you need to go to sleep, tell you when you need to wake up, tell you when you're late for work. You know, all the things that, you know, are irritating. Zero energy buildings. This will be the standard. All buildings that will, build, will not be consuming energy, they will actually be producing energy. The Arlington experience. So we're moving forward right now. The economy is going to change quite a bit. We don't know exactly how it's going to be, but I know my grandson will be around to see it. Thank you very much.